guys, Bonafide Hustler here. It's early in the morning. Let's get this hot shot started with a workout. It's all ready to go. Telephone, gains, coffee, gear shifter. Let's get this day started. So I'm on three week rotation kind of things on my workout, you know, and I'm approaching the last two days of another three weeks and it is definitely difficult. I'm gonna be switching it up again and uh, yeah, so programming is so important, you always, if you want to get the best result with fitness, you have to have intense amounts of programming. The human body gets used to a lot of things quickly. If you want results over results over results, you have to get your programming in check. So, anyways, I'll have to be working on that this weekend, programming for my wife, myself, for another three weeks, basically. All right, let's get to the gym. Gym after that, some studying after that. I don't know if I'm gonna get a ride in or something like that, but if not, then I'll do a hot shot. You might be wondering, why are you going to the gym at eight in the morning? Don't you usually go at six in the morning? True, I do. Last night, I went to go see this guy. Now, if you can't hear it that well, anyways, that was a Jack Johnson concert. First time ever seeing Jack Johnson, pretty good concert. So, all right, let's get to the gym. All right, just pull up to the gym. I'm gonna get in here, smash a push workout, and then I will go study. So, mm, with warm up and everything, about an hour and 20 minutes. Everything, abs, warm up, yeah, all that stuff. All this stuff is tracked as well, so basically when I get in there, I open a Google Doc, Take a look at uh, take a look at what I did last week of the same exercises. I'm just gonna try to do a little bit better. All right, so I just weighed myself here on this in body. It's like a uh, body fat testing uh, electro whatever scale. Anyways, there's a, there's a name for it. It eludes my mind right now. But anyways, uh, weighed it in about 189 pounds at 11% body fat. It's pretty good. No, I might just stay at 189 for the rest of the summer. I might decide to get a couple more pounds on me. We'll see. Feels good though, feel fast, agile, do the stuff that I want to do, so that's nice. Anyway, it's a pretty awesome machine though. I wish I could have one of these in my house. I got done with the workout. You know, I can honestly tell that uh, just me, me having some adult beverages last night at that concert, you know, even though I was pretty hydrated and whatever, I could totally feel it here in the gym today. Uh, so I'm not saying like, you know, so I'm not saying I'm never gonna do that again. I think life's a big balance, you know, you got to figure out some of the things that you like to do, your vices, whatever, and balance it with some of your physical goals and monetary goals, and love goals, whatever. <sighs> But I felt, I, I honestly felt, I felt like I got hit by a garbage truck the entire workout. It just was really, really hard. So but I did it. Most important thing is I did it. I'm not, you know, I'm not in the most optimal condition right now, but I'm still in. I think that's what really sets, I think that's what sets people apart from the doers versus the sayers. Is sometimes you just have to get in there and duke it out. That's basically it. So I'm gonna go do some work at the coffee shop and 
beautiful day today. I mean, beautiful. I gotta get some outside time. I can't wait to see my table at the house. Oh, my table. But yeah, let's get to the coffee shop and start working on this guide. Today we also finalized the seminar stuff for the meetup in June. You guys gotta go check it out. Do me a favor, check out the first link down below, the Green Room Meetup, to open to the public this year. It's basically a Wednesday through Saturday kind of meetup week event thing. And each day we do awesome stuff. You get to beat around a bunch of resellers. We do morning stuff, we do live thrifting, we have the Saturday garage sale caravan, we have the seminar on Thursday with speakers that are gonna be talking about eBay, Amazon, private label stuff, drop shipping. We also have the final event on Saturday night at a ranch. I mean, it's gonna be awesome. I want you guys to come. If you can make it, come check it out. It's early June, six, seven, eight, and nine. So if you can make it into Austin, Texas, definitely gotta check it out. First link down below, and you get to see kind of what goes down on Meetup Week. All I wanna do is get to my truck. There's like a freaking million people going through here. Jeez. I think this got rated as the busiest parking lot in the USA. I'm just kidding, I just made that stat up, but I think it is, really. I wanted to work on the guide so bad. Priority number one right now for us is uh, to make sure that the seminar goes down correctly and everything like that. We're about six weeks away from the meetup. Today we finalized the seminar schedule, which is amazing. I got some questions behind the scenes saying, do I need a ticket to attend the meetup? or meetup week. So part of the meetup week is, ava is available to the public, uh, but the seminar and the final event, which is the seminars where all the super learning goes down, and that's a lot of fun. And then the main event is where all the camaraderie and you know the dinner, all this really good stuff. And we have a vegetarian option available as well. But those two things, the seminar and the main event, you do need a ticket to attend those. Everything else we open to the public. It's about to get really crazy in about five weeks. So uh, this is some of the prep before all that. And I just, it's just a lot of work. work. Ah, it's a lot of work. Ah. Mm. So hungry, it's ridiculous. I can see the gains. Oh man, I just realized something. I ate the phone. I didn't even have a phone call with the gains company. Oh, I ate the phone completely. That's how hungry I am. All right, let's see what this tastes like. It's good. Same thing as yesterday. One scoop of whey protein, one scoop of plant-based protein, secret powders, Escobar style. Yeah, but all this stuff is just, all this stuff is natural. I do not do any of that. I do not do any of that black market stuff. Uh, <laughs> yeah, legal stuff, screw that. Okay, I'm in a bit of a pickle, right? Probably a dill pickle, honestly, not a cornichon or anything like that, but probably a dill pickle, because those are good. And then my pickle is, I go home, start working on some of the stuff. I have a very, very small death pile. Do I work on that or do I go on a hot shot right now for you guys? I don't know. And the hot shot's close. What should we do? Stop the video right here. Comment below. What do you think I'm going to do? Tell me. Now, am I going to go home and work on things or am I going to go on a hot shot? What's your guess? Comment right now. We're going to pause the video right here. For those of you guys that guessed he's gonna go on a hot shot, you're right, I'm gonna go. An hour and 30 minutes, that's it. That's all I'm doing today. I'll be in the savers in about five minutes, but I got a question to ask you guys. So comment below your answer. All right, so here's the question. If you have to hear this one song on repeat every hour for the rest of your life, would you pick Livin' La Vida Loca by Ricky Martin or Toxic by Britney Spears. Which one would you pick? No, and there's no third option, all right? Which one would you pick and why? It's kind of an interesting question if you think about it. Because both songs are hella annoying, honestly. <sighs> Tough one. We got savers. All right, let's get it. Oh, I can't even Hadouken it. No chance of Hadouken. None. Nothing. Hey, look, something for Alley Roots. It's almost like they haven't put anything new out. Oh, it must be like two days ago. It's like the same exact stuff everywhere. This is interesting. The Polo Country dry goods. 
like a chukka style boot. Interesting. All right, didn't find anything there. I mean, there were some things. Uh, two polo boots. One you saw, one you didn't see. Uh, one was like 40 bucks, probably sell for about 80. Decided not to get it. The other one that you saw was 20 bucks, could resell maybe for 50, but it's not within my parameters. On my way to the Goodwill. Here we go. All right, let's see if I can get it. It's a late door. Oh, dang it. What? What the hell? It was all late last time, and now it's all early this time. All right, that's it. Let's check the cart. Ew. Whoa, sweet. Scoping out the bag section. Don't see anything yet. All right, 15 bucks. Might get into these. These are Oscar Sport fur boots. I mean, tons sold on eBay. Tons. So yeah, maybe if I can optimize my keywords, I'll land at the top here. But looking like about a hundred dollar sale. Also going to be grabbing these Patagonia Ranger Smith boots. Twenty bucks. Going to be aiming for about a hundred. Hadouken. Oh, sweet. I think I got it. I think that Hadouken worked though. <laughs> Man, I don't know if I'll get to TLP today, maybe. Maybe if I find a super sweet $1,000 table or so. Did you guys hear on my last vlog that the bench to the table I bought two days ago? The bench. Did you guys hear what the bench costs? Mind you, my table and my bench are in very, very good condition. But the bench, $837. What? Holy moly, it makes me want to sneeze and all the cheddar just goes flying out, bam telling you that's just too big of a cheddar hit right there i cannot believe it i'm keeping it <laughs> i'll believe that okay another assignment real quick i just thought about something in there all right here we go ready take the word cheddar and put it into a famous movie title and post it down below i want to see how many crazy cheddar movies we can come up with so you know if you're like oh you know i really like uh, mystic pizza and call it mystic cheddar right or, make me laugh that's your assignment i want to see some good ones Oh yeah, you remember that wooden fish that I dropped off at the booth? You'll see it in a upcoming ride along. Picked it up for 20 bucks at a garage sale. Um, that fish sold for, that fish sold in my booth and they netted me a check or the amount of $58. Pretty good, right? For a fish, a wood fish, sweet. Any more wood fish around here? Anyone wanna take a ride up the Cheddar Stream, huh? You wanna spawn a little bit? I'm telling you, man, that thing was badass. I need to find more of those. At the family store. Um, last week, uh, a couple days ago, they had a uh, big Asian discount. So I was able to go in. Uh, I don't have a family yet. I mean, I have a wife. I got dogs. I guess they would let me in if I took my dogs here, my wife. Hmm. I guess that's my family. Maybe they have a big Asian discount today. <laughs> have you thought about some cheddar movies yet? Let me know. Let's get in this place. Sweet table, bro. All right, nothing found there, but honestly, I'm already in like juice level profits, man. I can get a juice or something good. Not too bad. Those two shoes were awesome at the last thrift store. All right, last Goodwill, last Goodwill, let's go. Generic crap. All right, so didn't find anything there, but you know what? That one Goodwill, I've only been on this, by the way, I've only been on this hot shot for like an hour. So, you know, finding those two boots for an hour, it's pretty good, you know? Thank you for the number in. Yum. All right. Okay, so I decided to get a fresh watermelon juice. Let's try this watermelon one. It is much better than yes. Oh my god, it's much better than two days ago watermelon or three days ago, whenever I got it. So imagine a watermelon, it's freshly juiced, nothing else, no extra sugar. They don't even have stevia, any kind of sweeteners in that place. It's crazy. I'm gonna shoot those boots today and get them up by this evening. So decent hot shot, man. One hour hot shot, pretty powerful one hour, honestly. 
Wish I found more bags and stuff, but that's the thing about the bags to bucks guide and the whole bag trade is you don't want to pressure in the bag stuff. Like it just comes. And when it comes, you know you're making money. So I don't ever like try to bend anything. Like I do my bag checks. I stick with the brands that I know and I wait. Quite honestly, bags pop up all the freaking time, man. I'm sitting on one that is like such a ticking time bomb when it comes to cheddar. Uh, it was 40 bucks. It's coming out in a ride along very soon. You'll see that one. I mean, I really do think the lowest end on this one bag is gonna be $200 sale on eBay. In fact, I think at $300 it has six watchers or something like that. So it kind of puts it in perspective. If I lower it like 50 bucks, it'd probably be gone. So, you know, I lowered it by $10 this morning before relisting it and putting it under my sale. So I think if everything goes right, I think everything, I, if everything goes right, I think I'll sell this thing on eBay for around 260, 270. That's what I think. Guys, pick up the bag guide. Not even joking. I'll pin a comment down below. I usually pin the comment when I find a bag or I sell a bag or whatever, but if you guys just want to supplement your income stream right now with, with something that is so overlooked in thrift stores, so overlooked in garage sales, I really think the bad guy's for you. Give it a whirl, check it out. It's the uh, first comment down below. It's my own comment, I will pin it so you guys can check out the guide. Maybe it's for you. Back at the Hustler Casa, I'm gonna whip up something really quick, probably some eggs, a small amount of carbs, and some avocado, because I think later, my wife is coming home with Franklin's Barbecue. Now, if you don't know anything about Franklin's Barbecue, it's been on the Travel Channel, it's really highly, acclaimed barbecue and you have to wait in a crazy line to go get it. My wife this morning along with I think two of her work colleagues, I think she, there's a trainee involved or something like that, they are, I know at some point they sat out and waited hours and hours to get this barbecue. She said she's gonna bring some back home for me so I'm already predicting forward that there's some barbecue in the future, maybe some beans or whatever so I'm gonna go a little bit lighter on this meal now and that's kind of how my mind thinks. If I know that I'm going to be cutting loose for something in the future, whether it be a dinner, uh, a wedding, something like that, you know, I, I really scale back the first couple meals in the day because I know a lot of calories are coming forward, you know, later. Yeah, barbecue is not, <laughs> barbecue is not calorie friendly whatsoever, but, you know, I make some exceptions and Franklin's definitely one of them. She's almost there. This is what the inside of Franklin's barbecue looks like. She just sent me, texted me a picture of this thing. Almost there, I said, how long you wait? All right, so half an avocado, scrambled eggs, two yolks, uh, the rest were whites. I decided I wanted some hummus, so here's some roasted red pepper hummus. And that is first real meal of the day right here. Yum! On the shooting deck today, the Osprey bag from yesterday, the Osprey Cyber, waterproof Patagonia Ranger Smith boots, very good condition. The fur boots from today, these are made by Oscar, I wanna say, Oscar Sport. Lollapalooza White Sox Chicago hat. A little bit harder to find, but pretty cool. Puff embroidery, flex fit back. That's going up today as well. So I thought something stuck on the bottom of the sole, but it looks like something melted a little bit on the sole here. It'll probably bring down the price like 10 or 20 bucks. All right, before I start editing this vlog, this is where all my heavy boxes go towards the bottom. You can see some over here. My shoe wall is basically right there, here. It's bleeding into here now, a little bit up there, and there, there, there. But what you don't know is like boots and stuff are all on these other boxes. Those are all boots because they can't fit in these. So this is kind of like the shoe section right now from here all the way over there. There's like a backpack in one of the bags, but for the most part, these are all shoes over here. Over here we have other stuff. First class stuff is usually right around there. And also first class stuff plus padded polys and all that kind of stuff, pre-boxed, all that stuff is sitting right here in three bins. Very easy to go through. I know where most stuff is. And then other random stuff is right around here. So yeah, we're further down the racks and you can see all the stuff is pre-boxed. Now that's the way I like to do the business, honestly, is uh, not to be reactive, it's just to have everything proactively done, have all my supplies. And I kind of treat it, and I talk about this in my first book, but I treat it like a factory, right? I snap all my pictures at once, I do all my listings at once, and I do all the packing up usually at once as well. When items finally sell on eBay, it's just pull time, right? I just go around and I pull, pull, pull. I pull boxes off, throw them on this shelf, get them weighed out, done. So it's very easy, 16 hours a week, high energy, a lot of fun, and everything is pre-boxed. That's one thing that 
I definitely wouldn't do any other way. If it wasn't pre-boxed, I would be so stressed out. It wouldn't even be a fun business for myself. If you're out there and you got inventory and you're like, man, this pre-boxing thing sounds amazing, start slow, right? Maybe do like five pre-boxes a day or something like that and get your inventory pre-boxed on shelves. That way everything's out of bins and stuff. Nothing's laying on top of one another. Nothing's actually damaging something else or putting a crease in something else that doesn't need to have a crease. By putting it in boxes, you have to get a little bit more space to do that, but the items stay fresh and they're never screwed up for the most part. Plus when it's time to pull, that's the fun part because you know you're making money. And yeah, just so it doesn't bleed into my gym, I have these sunblocker curtains with a wire rod up there. So basically that's it. And I close this stuff up. We have a nice clean garage with a padded floor that I can weight lift with and do stuff with. I have the curtains also blocking all the bikes that I own, which are back there. But yeah, it keeps everything out of the way and just keeps it, you know, keeps everything to where I can, and it keeps it to where I can run a business and still have a life that I enjoy right here. About to edit the vlog, but I wanted to give a shout out to all you guys out there. It's about 24 hours after I uploaded yesterday's vlog, we hit the 300 mark. Look at that, goal 300. You guys should be really proud of yourselves. That's awesome, so thank you so much. If you choose to like this video, do it now. It's really important. All right, I've agreed to meet my wife here at this 7-Eleven. She's almost done with her work day, but she needs to zoom down Central. She needs to zoom down to Central Austin for something. So anyways, she had just hit me up and she said, hey, do you want to meet at this uh, gas station that's close so I can drop the Franklin barbecue with you? And I said, uh, yes, please. I don't know how much she got or whatever, but uh, if there's some sort of a drop off going on, it's gotta be a decent amount. Man, talk about a weird person right here. My wifey, she just pulled up. All right, we'll get it. Okay, so she's gone, but yeah, look at this. This is what Franklin barbecue looks like. All right, forget this part right here, but uh, looks like the barbecue sauce is there, or maybe here. There's probably some beans in here, some potato salad, which she said was really, really good. Probably coleslaw, I'm guessing, and look at this barbecue. Let's get home, guys, so I can show it to you. So my wife waited with some other people for three hours today, three, to get this. Wow. That's a long way for some food. I don't know if I would wait three hours for anything, honestly. That, that, this better be, hey, this better be good. Let's go. Okay, so let's just get to the important stuff. The brisket, all the barbecue. Yeah, there's some potato salad right here. My guess, my guess is I'll probably eat some of this for dinner, so I'm gonna have a little bit right now. And we have some sauce to dip it in. So I'll let you know right here, I'll let you know right here, I'll let you know right here on film what does it taste like. I'll get a piece of brisket. Now I've had Franklin's before, but this is fresh Franklin's. I've had, they can, they give you a frozen option too or something like that. I've had that option, but I've never had the real, like fresh one. So here's a piece of brisket. I mean, it's amazing looking. I cannot believe it. Yeah, to me, this is the best barbecue in Austin, Texas. Version Jack, hands down. The Salt Lick would be very, if you've ever, ever heard of this place called the Salt Lick, which we took people on the second green room made up, we took them to the Salt Lake. That's my second favorite. It is unbelievable. Now there's other stuff here. Looks like maybe pulled pork or I don't know. And then there's a rib right here. There's a sausage right there. It's all in the brisket though. The brisket is to die for. See, maybe it's just in Texas, like people go crazy over stuff like this. But that is legit. Look at that, it's just like falling off my hand. Food porn for anybody that cares on the Bonafide Hustler channel. All right, so I'm gonna eat a little bit more of this and I gotta get to this, <laughs> I gotta get this thing edited so you guys can enjoy it. You best believe there's gonna be some clickbait title on this one. Anyways, I'm gonna get this vlog edited. I hope you enjoyed it. So definitely leave a comment and answer all my questions. But I hope I gave you guys some insight on things that you can pick up for eBay and even a little bit behind the scenes on some of my inventory and box wall kind of situation. Hey, you know, I hope it inspires you guys. I can honestly say, like I said earlier, I wouldn't choose to do it any other way. This is. I think this is the best way to run the eBay business. Leave your comments down below. Let me know what's going on. Oh yeah, and there's probably gonna be a question like what do you do when you get a question about something and you need like a measurement, for example. Well, you have to open up the box. But that's very few and far between because I don't deal with clothing that much. But hey, I make these videos for entertainment to inspire you guys. 
all that kind of stuff. So, hey, so I'll make you a deal. I'll film the next hotshot and you guys watch it. Take it easy. Bye.